Well, howdy, folks. Welcome to the inaugural edition of the Pound Pin. This is going to be an ongoing series on YouTube that outlines the trials and tribulations of British motorcycle enthusiasts up here in frozen Canada. The date today, uh, it's late June and it's about three degrees. The bike is running real well. First episode is going to be to do with the other side of the bike where we took it all apart and replaced cam locating spring. It's going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned for more. Let's go into the show. Here is the offending piece. It is the cam locating spring found in gearboxes from 1971 to 1973 on the Triumph models. On the top, you can see the wear that causes false neutrals. When you shift into second or fourth, up or down shifting, you will notice that you think you're in gear X, but in real life, you're in neutral. Pop the clutch out, revs go up to five, 6,000 right quick. This next image is a diagram from J.B. Nicholson's book showing the offending part, number six, very clearly. If we analyze this, we can quickly see how any wear or tear on that part would quickly cause that cam to just slip out of place. There's the book. You fucking need this if you're going to work on old Brit bikes. I don't care if you're from Canada or the States or even fucking England. Mind you, Nicholson is from Saskatchewan, so I guess there's a bit of a bias there in promoting the book. Here's some leftover golden Castrol 2050 from when we took the original cover off. Looking pretty good there. This image shows an example of why you need a magnetic puller device. What we're looking at here is an example of why these things get to be a little bit complex. We need a Phillips screwdriver and an extended socket and an Allen wrench just to take off and or torque down one piece. All right, folks, this is what your shop should look like. This is the most important part of any project. We got the turkey drip pan underneath the crankcase. We got the ashtray for everybody to use. We got the piece of cardboard that looks like KFC's been sitting on it for three weeks. Most importantly, we got locking pliers. I mean, seriously, folks, that indicates that the people involved in this project have a seriously good understanding of British fastener standards. This part of the project that's in view now was one of the most rewarding parts. Needed to get a gasket and didn't have one and couldn't find one, so what do you do? Well, you make one yourself. What I used was an old mailing envelope. Took the piece placed it up against the part itself so that the grease made a mark, good to go. Now we're looking at the use of an unusual tool in a workshop that is in fact a three-hole punch from the office. Uh, that's what I used to make the stud holes in the gasket. So just goes to show how easy it can be. There is the gasket once it's all cut out with an X-Acto knife installed on the part and coming up here we'll see the whole thing back together good to go all right we're going to close off the show here with a couple images of the bike once it was all back together and project complete i know what you're all thinking it's going to leak like a sieve probably not run at all well here's a couple of images to prove you all wrong it's me riding the bike after the fact thanks for watching the pound pins and stay tuned for more cheers from canada